So usually this is where we have a witty, funny uh, response. Uh, ban yeah. Some banter between. But considering the the uh, most recent uh, circumstances, not only in sports, but also in the country, uh, we will eschew that for now. We may still laugh during parts of this uh, uh, segment, but there's a there's a lot that we need to get into into, uh, especially considering this is do or die week, basically for yeah. a major league baseball season that resembles somewhere close to a normal fashion. Yeah, we're not even sure if baseball is gonna come back at this point uh, because of how tense everything was. I mean, we had talked of uh, there were talks of an 82 game season maybe a hundred to like make a minimum to make the world series like legitimate or something. And then the owners propose one thing players are doing their own thing and it, it is it's a not looking good. It's a mess. Especially for next year. Yeah. And especially considering that this is all on the backdrop that at shortly after spring training in 2021, the labor agreement that they're currently under expires. So, yeah, so. Uh, let's let's start from the beginning then, because last time we talked, we had been hearing uh, rumors and drips and leaks of what baseball was set to propose, and players were not happy that this was getting leaked out, and finally, uh, after, I believe it was like 10 or 12 days from the first point of hearing about about uh, these proposals, uh, Major League Baseball formerly proposed put their first proposal out for what a 2020 season could look like. And uh, they to start, the biggest thing is owners uh, scrapped the idea of prorated uh, salaries or a revenue split and instead had a sliding scale where uh, players would make less than the prorated with cuts coming more from the, uh, the, uh, play the players making the most. So, for example, a... A $10 million uh, uh, dollar player would make $2.9 million over their proposed 82-game season instead of a $5 million that they would make prorated normally. Mm -hmm. A $35 million player would make roughly $7.8 million in instead of uh, doing the math about $18 million, which would only affect Mike Trout, Garrett Cole, and maybe one or two others, but it's... Yeah. That's a 75% uh, cut. What I still don't understand, maybe I'm missing this, though. Um, but like Bobby Bonilla and Prince Fielder, they'd still be getting their entire pay anyway? Yes, because they were released. And, and it went, or in, well, in Bobby Bonilla's uh, case, it was prorated. And yeah. because this is only covering salaries for players who are on the active roster for this season... The Mets still have to pay the one point something million dollars that they have to pay him. Similarly, uh, Prince Fielder is medic was forced into medical retirement, and uh, they the Rangers cut a deal with him so that they would he would get most of his money that was owed to him still, and not take a take up a four, uh, forty man roster spot over the off season when he has to occupy one. So because that's outside of the scope of it of a contract that was negotiated as a player that also is not covered under this deal. So the Rangers are still on the hook for that hefty contract. Yeah. But uh, uh. yeah, other things of note of this proposal, uh, it did not expand uh, the postseason to 14 teams like they were t uh, kicking around. And there was nothing that was really said about what happens if a player decides to opt out, which is important because that's not just a uh, concern in baseball. That's a concern in any on all the sports that are trying to come back. What happens if a player says, I understand that you're trying to do the best to keep us safe, but I can't take that risk and I need to take time off until a vaccine or a, tre or a treatment is confirmed to be good. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, not a very nice situation, to put it very bluntly. No. Uh, but, so you have guys like Garrett Cole and Trout who would be dropping using the owner's proposed system from 36 
down to like 8 million. Um, and obviously that's not something you want to be doing. Players are already saying they're taking a pay cut, uh, but the, they really haven't taken a pay cut yet because they're only playing half the games. Um, but the players still have to understand if they don't play any games, they're not getting any money. Unless if you're Prince Fielder. Yeah. Um, but that's still the big problem, though, is the owners are just being completely ridiculous. Uh, yeah, we'll get get this. into some of the other things that the owners have done more recently yeah. in a bit. But, but what I'm still sort of... Uh, I, I don't know if they're able to write this off as tax things and whatnot, but you keep seeing like some players like David Price and some of those other guys who are paying like a thousand dollars or a couple hundred each week to all the minor league players in their systems. Um, why? Like I understand they've all been minor leaguers. They've been living. They lived paycheck to paycheck, uh, working with their families and coming up through the ranks. And they definitely want to give back. And I hope those guys who maybe might not have been doing super well at single A, but maybe kick up the gear and then they're all stars but these MLB players are paying uh, them like a bit of a stipend and uh, I feel like the, the owners need to be stepping up on that instead they they do and and needless to say the players union uh, did not really like most of what was presented to them so a week later the uh, players association uh, made their counter proposal Actually, uh, as of recording, it was yesterday. Uh, and their proposal was, needless to say, a lot different from what the uh, the, o the uh, owners proposed. Instead of an 82-game season, which part of the reason for that was concerns of uh, uh, facing off against football and a potential uh, resurgence of, uh, of the virus mm -hmm. in the fall, yes. they proposed a 114-game season that runs through the end of October. They also they also introduced uh, the a uh, the fourteen uh, team uh, postseason format that was uh, proposed and kicked around. Additionally, players would receive a hundred million dollars salary advance uh, during uh, spring summer training, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, if in the event of a canceled uh, po uh, postseason because of a uh, virus uh, resurgence. Uh, there would there would be a deferment of a hundred million dollars that uh, that would be deferred from their salary, that would be paid paid in uh, at the end of 2021 and 2022, but only for players that made more than 10 million dollars. Uh, additionally, uh, players who are, are considered high risk candidates, which includes both the players themselves and their immediate family would be able to opt out and still keep their salary and their service time. Players, See, players that uh, are not high risk but still, um, still uh, opt out of the season will still get their service time, but they will forfeit their salary. I have a little bit of a problem with that. I go ahead. Um, all right, so I, I, I'm fine with if you aren't high risk and you don't play you get your service time but you don't get your money that's fine if you are high risk uh and you don't play uh and you still get your money i'm fine with that it's that your family uh who is high risk uh and you don't play uh you're playing baseball and if everything's supposed to be all like located you shouldn't be near your family. You should be playing these games in Texas or Arizona or wh wherever these games are playing. You shouldn't be near the family anyway. That's a BS excuse. Well, I'm sorry. Well, remember back when we were talking when we were talking about baseball returning as an Arizona plan or an Arizona and Florida plan, uh, there were a lot of players who were bristling at the thought of being sequestered for potentially three, four months uh, in isolation from their families. So. I, this is probably a compromise from those players who are irked by that. And, well, you know, and also, you're making millions of dollars so they can just deal with that. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm sorry, but, like, 
it, it, that's what it is. I mean, you want to take a, a real world example. Uh, the creators of South Park, they do all their episodes the week of, that way it keeps it relevant. They hunker down uh, with everything uh, and they work for 12 weeks straight around the clock doing everything they do and then they have the rest of the year. I mean, we're trying to cram in 162 normal games down to probably, what, 112 uh, maybe yeah, hundred, um, hundred something. But but we're we're cramming this season now into instead of it being from March all the way up until like now November, uh, we're crunching this now down until maybe if everything's approved from maybe July now uh, until November. I mean that that's a lot less time. Uh, I know it's not twelve weeks, but you're getting paid millions of dollars uh, to do that, and it's just for a couple months. Uh, I think they got to deal with that and just play the game, uh, not see their family yeah. uh, for the three, four months. I yeah. mean, it, th that's what it comes down to. Yeah. Well, my concern with it is not is the uh, length of the schedule is not so much the risk of uh, virus, especially considering that that. Uh, it it seems to be on a downtrend and might they might have a better clamp on it in the fall not as it's not against facing uh nfl which they already do that in september and october anyway it's about the weather and while it might mm -hmm. be fine to uh play november postseason baseball in tampa bay and los angeles it's not so much so fun to do it in new york or chicago and or Milwaukee. Uh, Milwaukee's under a dome, so they'll be fine. But Chicago... I'm saying like that area. Yeah, but, but Chicago's yeah, open air, New York's open air, Philadelphia, Washington. Mm -hmm. There are just so mm -hmm. many open open uh, air games. and That's why I think all stadiums should have retractable roofs. I, I really think they should. Yeah, they should. There's no reason that Minnesota built a brand new stadium for the 2010 season and it didn't have a roof. That's a city that, that absolutely yeah. needs it. Same with Denver. I, they need a roof. Although that is a very beautiful park, I will say that. But need, yeah. needless to say, the owners were as uh, as welcoming of this deal as the players were to theirs. And uh, there's negotiations going on right now behind the scenes. But in the last hour, one of those well those well liked uh, leaks came out, and it states that the uh, the MLB is prepared to propose an even smaller schedule. Perhaps as few as sixty, fifty, or even forty games That's just of a, a season, dumb. Uh, according to uh, to uh, John Heyman, uh, that uh, Commissioner Manfred quote Commissioner Manfred has the right via the March twenty sixth agreement to unilaterally start a season of any length, even short, and pay prorated salaries. There is no intention for MLB to propose that now. However, hope remains that there's a compromise in place. He's, a season of meaningful length. Theoretically, if the commissioner were to start or a short season, players who didn't abide in play would perceive nothing. That said, MLB plans to re uh, plan remains to financially continue to negotiate with the players in order to find a compromise solution and not order a drastically truncated season. End quote. This is... Wow. So, first of all, I think we're both in agreement... 50, 60 games is way too short for a baseball season. You had crazy yeah. postseason uh, possibilities with the 100-game uh, season of nine, 1981. A 50-60 game se season, or even a 40, theoretically every team has the chance to make a postseason at that time. What yeah, legitimacy I mean, how, uh, is that going to be? Yeah, I mean, how many teams do we see it takes them to hit their stride until, like, maybe 30 or so games into the season? Uh, I, I mean, this is just completely ridiculous. And then, at, at this point, who do you even play? Just your division? Um, yeah. yeah. I, I, I mean, that, that, that's what it's coming. That's what it looks like to me. Yeah. Um, and I'll... I'll I, I, go ahead. No, I, I think this is just... Uh, uh, we try and keep this PG, but this is a pissing contest right now. Yeah. Um, it, it It's really come down to it. The owners have been jerks, uh, and the players were like, all right, we see that, and we're going to raise you this, uh, which 
I kind of like to see what the I, I like what the players had offered uh, with their 112. I mean, obviously not everything's perfect, um, but then the owners were just like a bunch of children, and by offering 50 games, that's just yeah. No, and we are no, we already said that the owners were in were being in bad faith when it seemed like every detail was leaking to the media well before any the players' union even caught wind of it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, the, uh, Jason Stark on Twitter uh, says, quote, if MLB p officially proposes a 50-game season or shorter, the message that it sends is that is this. We have X dollars we can allocate to paying players in 2020 if they're no fa fans. It's the player's call if they want to earn that over 50 games, 82 games, or more, end quote. But John Heyman also says on Twitter, quote, the problem with ordering a, a severely shortened season is that many fans would question the legitimacy of such a year. If health requires it, that's one thing. But if a short season is ordered only because the sides couldn't strike a deal, critics would pounce. And that's the big ultimate thing that's going on right here. Uh, we'll get into this a little later, but uh, the NHL and NBA... Well, the NHL has already announced that it will go straight to the uh, postseason. Uh, the NBA is set to do that soon as well. So baseball's yes. already lost the uh, the goodwill that it had that it was trying to build to as being the first first team to announce uh, they were returning. They may still be the first uh, team to play, but if a se if a short season or is uh, is done, there'll be more bad uh, will on it if it's just on salary. And then God forbid if they have to cancel the the season over this. You're gonna. 1994 is going to, going to look like a two day strike. You're going to yeah. f to destroy the sport. And the worst thing it, about it is there are some people who want to do this. It broke out last night that there are some owners in baseball. They didn't say yeah. who, but you can guess based on on how they're treating their their uh, employees and their minor leaguers. There are some owners in baseball that are willing to cancel the season over this. They're yeah, willing to uh, yeah, take long. I saw that, and I, I, in the back of my mind, I figured some of the owners probably would be like, mm, "Let me crunch the numbers. What's better for me?" Um, and this is just complete, like, j just to like, like I said, it was in the back of my mind that some of the owners would think about this, but to actually have it come out, it was just sort of like. Come on, really? Like th this is, this has been America's pastime, and if we lose this season because the owners are being jerks and the players are just not budging on anything, uh, and we lose this season and this continues into next year uh, when the deal expires, uh, this is just gonna probably put a nail in the coffin in baseball being America's pastime because. Uh, we've already sort of been losing it to like football and basketball over the years, uh, but the only reason that hockey hockey didn't gain much ground during the '94 season strike was that they too they lost their entire '94 '95 season to a strike as well. So, baseball caught a break when they lost the World Series that hockey couldn't gain, gain ground either. But it's a different playing field now. With you, you have media. You have you even have soccer starting to gain popularity that. That yeah. you, if owners want to be short-sighted to get short-term gains, they're going to destroy the sport like no other, uh, no other major uh, sport has ever had happened to them. It it would be on account par. It it would be on sc a scandal to the paramount of even the fixing of FIFA games and the corruption in the FIFA organization. That would pale in consider, in uh, comparison to this, because that soccer at least has a worldwide following that can keep it afloat, even if uh, the biggest organization falters. Baseball doesn't have that; it's localized to the United States, uh, Southeast Asia, and that's it. I'm, s although I do want to say before we get into the. Uh, this isn't every owner, and I do want to. No. I do want to name specifically the uh, Minnesota Twins, the Kansas City Royals, the Fl the Miami Marlins, the San Diego Padres, the Seattle Mariners, and the Cincinnati Reds. 
Uh, right now, and this this is our segue into the other part of why I'm not happy with the owners. Uh, um, there are minor league cuts going around right now. Uh, teams are releasing players, uh, at some as uh, 15, 20, 30, some as even 40, 50, and 60. Uh, uh, the, the athletics have informed their minor leaguers that effective uh, May 31st, they will no longer be paid. But the the Twins, Royals, Marlins, Padres, Mariners, and Reds have all said that they will pay their minor leaguers throughout the end of the minor, the traditional minor league season. And specifically, I want to uh, mention the Royals because that's a brand new ownership group. That's an ownership group that just took over the team at the end of the 2019 season. They haven't even seen their first official baseball game. And they are saying that we are going to pay our players. And to quote uh, uh, their GM, Dayton Moore, uh, he says, quote, we felt it was really, really important not to release one minor league player during this time at a, a time we need to stand behind them. So I give up, I take off my proverbial hat to, to the Royals. Yeah. And, but it also puts a hole in the argument for the owners. Because if the Royals can pay their minor leaguers, the Twins, the twins can pay at the Marlins, uh, yep. traditionally low-budget teams, they can pay their minor leaguers. Like It came out the other day that the, uh, the Nationals, the world champion Nationals, were going to cut their minor leaguers pay from 400 to $300. And yeah. there was considerable outrage of it. Uh, the, uh, the major league roster said that we'll front the, uh, the $100 and make sure that the minor leaguers aren't... Uh, Aren't cut, and the backlash was just so great that the uh, Nationals uh, uh, reversed their decision. And the damning quote was that the Nationals are cutting their the minor leaguers pay. Meanwhile, uh, their their majority owner Ted Lerner is worth five point three billion dollars. And this is the problem that's that's going on. You have billionaires uh, trying to one up millionaires, millionaires trying to one up billionaires. It's hard to root for one side or the or the other. Like personally, I, I I know that I'm for the players. That I feel that the the owners are are trying to take advantage of the situation to get uh, labor agreements that they couldn't get in eighty one, ninety, and ninety four. I know from your language, Joe, that you're kind more middle ground. Maybe uh, maybe not so hot on the uh, the players. But for the general public who doesn't really know the behind the scenes as much as we do, mm -hmm. they don't care. They just want to see the game played. And I mean, I definitely want to see the games yeah. being played. But like, you, you definitely have to think of both sides and where things come from. And uh, I, I was th when the two point two trillion dollar uh, package was uh, passed here in the United States, and I was thinking, I'm like, well, there's only three hundred thousand. Uh, America, well, a little bit more than that, but for a nice round number, 300,000 Americans, $2 trillion being passed. I'm like, where is all this money going if, like, everyone could get a billion dollars? But then, like, I had thought, I'm like, wait, wait a second, we got to divide this stuff up. So just because an owner has $5 billion doesn't mean he can take all that out and give each player uh, a billion dollars. Like, it, do it doesn't work like that. Um, and obviously that's what the owners are trying to do. They don't want to be losing too much, um, considering how many, we've talked about it before, there's a lot of minor league teams in MLB. Right. Um, uh, as a kid, I always thought it was just single A, double A, triple A. Now, like, as I get older, it's like high A, high double A. Yeah, uh, rookie, low, rookie uh, league. Like, like, yeah, I know. Venezuelan like, league. Like, well, what the hell is this? <laughs> yeah. Although, although to be devil's advocate, the uh, owners have caught heat that their their uh, figures that said that they would lose four billion dollars uh, overall by playing without uh, fans over an 82 game season did not include all sources of revenue. So the owners have not been fully forthcoming in what constitutes yeah, that, that, revenue that's, and that's what, what doesn't. Some of the players were really concerned about, as we saw, that they wanted to see the exact breakdown of what the owners were claiming 
that they were going to be losing so much money that they can't afford to not only pay the minor leaguers, but the major league players as well in their hefty $20 million plus salary uh, for some of those players. And um, I, th I think the owners also need to think about uh, how much they're going to lose in the future if they just shut baseball down for two entire years, possibly. You saw, because you saw what happened. You're going to be losing jersey sales because if, if you can't go to the – sure, the people going to the games definitely makes up a lot of that revenue plus the television deals. Oh, sorry. Um, um, but you're still going to get television deals anyway because they're going to be broadcasting the games. Um, you're just not going to be getting – uh, that revenue from the people coming in and then the food and all that stuff from the vendors. Um, although Tampa Bay seems to be doing pretty fine, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I was going to say, um, the other the other argument is the Marlins barely draw five, uh, barely draw 10,000 people on average. The Royals have attendance problems. Uh, most Many of the Midwestern teams actually have attendance problems. So you say that, that that's they're not really getting much from gate revenue anyway yeah so some of those teams uh, and like we said some of those small market teams are even still paying uh, yeah those minor yeah if leaders. anything they're, so, they're the ones leading the charge on that yeah, so uh, this is just sort of mind by not, and i know the rays really only keep like what a 50 million dollar roster or something yeah like they're that. forced because yeah. of their stadium situation uh, uh, to keep a, yeah. a, a tight rope yeah um but I think some of these owners need to learn some of that as well, um, which is why I was sort of like afraid of the Red Sox in these next upcoming years, if we even get baseball, because um, yeah. they had signed the guy from uh, Tampa uh, to be their new GM. And uh, that dude was in charge of all the booking and keeping everything small and making the Rays one of the highest winning percentages over these last like five years yeah so yeah but the owner owners and the players they have to think what happened in night in the last times 1981 uh that strike that was when that was the beginning of the slide for major league baseball that was when they they started forfeiting the title of america's sport to football and then in 1994 the expos were destroyed there there was attendance drops for the next few years after that which led to players juicing up to, to, uh, to uh, try to, which to save baseball, but caused other long-term problems for the sport. That we don't know what the repercussions could be for an entirely lost season for baseball. I mean, at this point, I think I'd rather see the Astros just cheat their way through everything if we're just going to get baseball back. Yeah, that, yeah. Um, at this point, you might might as well just try try to save your save your franchise, save your city. Now, obviously, don't, but. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we've been talking for 30 minutes, almost 25, Just 30 minutes baseball, about baseball. Man. And there's so much else go going on. We haven't even gotten yeah. to the NHL and the yeah. NBA. So let me just talk. The NBA is still a little like, eh, we don't know yeah. everything uh, quite yet. They, 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 some teams have opened up practice facilities and uh, they're only allowed to have like a certain number of people and whatnot. Yeah. But the NHL is a little bit more clear. Yeah. Uh, they're going to jump right into the playoffs. They're going to have sort of an expanded sort of thing. Um, but w what it's coming to, originally it was going to be, I believe, like the top like 12 teams or whatever it was in each division, or the top six teams in each division, uh, so 12 in each league, uh, 24 overall. But we talked last time, that would leave the Rangers – who had like the 16th best record in all of NHL, uh, 16th most points uh, out of all those teams, and they were going to be left out of the top 24. Um, there were like teams like the Ducks who would theoretically have made it in with only 67 points to the Rangers 79, and some teams had only played 68 of the 82 games, while the Rangers have played 70, so the Rangers played two more games. Um, but that's still at least 12 more games for the Rangers to have played. And the, a lot can happen. I mean, the, the New York Islanders in their past seven games when they played months ago, they were on a seven-game losing streak. and they, they, they were in the running for first place. I mean, they're still only a point out uh, of the wild card there. Um, but prior to that, uh, 
they were probably in a good run to maybe get first place or second place uh, in the Metropolitan Division. Uh, so n now things have been sort of rearranged. I guess they took the top 12, uh, 12 teams in each division or in each conference. Um, but there were two teams that decided to say no to this, and it passed anyway because it was only two. It was the Tampa Bay Lightning and the Carolina Hurricanes. And the Lightning, I'm not entirely sure why, because um, it wasn't like they were in first place like the Boston Bruins, um, even though Tampa Bay only had one less win. But Boston had six extra overtimes, uh, so that catapulted them eight points ahead. Um, but the Hurricanes, uh, they got their butts kicked by the Rangers uh, this year. Four games to none, being outscored like 19 to like seven or something like that. Um, it, it was just completely crazy. And the Hurricanes would have to play the Rangers in the way this... Now, they're not sure if it's going to be a bracket format. Um, or if they'll do reseeding like they normally do. And I hope they do the reseeding because I really don't like bracket formats. I think it takes away from everything. Um, it, it just, I don't, know, I don't think it makes it as competitive. Um, but yeah, so we're going to have that. Uh, but as a Rangers fan, uh, to sort of tie it in with uh, how we talked about with baseball, with players coming back or staying home. Uh, the Rangers have a uh, rookie, uh, Capo Caco, and uh, he not only has celiac, but he also has type 1 diabetes. And uh, he is, there's talks for him to just not come back at this point. I mean, he's only like 19 years old, no reason to jeopardize his entire playing career. He was picked number two overall this past year um, behind John Hughes, I think it was. Yeah. Um, so, you got that going on as well, and uh, I, I don't know, I, I don't want to see him go, and he wasn't making a great, great impact, but he was still, like, getting the groove, I mean, he's 19. He, I mean, he was making more impact than you would think from a 19-year-old yeah, in, fr in, a yeah. in on a team in the, that it was fighting for a playoff spot. Yeah, yeah I mean, time. it took them three-fourths of the year to finally, like, realize what the hell they were going through, and then... Even now, they're still not sure because Henrik Lundqvist, who was now dropped to like third in the goalie depth chart, uh, he has some really good career numbers against the Hurricanes, including this year when he wasn't looking very good. So there's maybe even talk giving Lundqvist a job at this point. So uh, the Rangers still don't have exactly what they're looking for. And, uh, so t to lose a key piece uh, that was sort of like bringing everything together as things were coming together for him. Now they're going to be losing that. and uh, I, I know hockey players are the toughest guys in sports, uh, so I know Kako's not going to want to not play, but uh, you got to think, I guess, about your health. And unlike baseball, hockey players don't make that much money. No, and that the that's the whole thing tying back to the to, – uh, the, the reason why there's the labor dispute in the first place, MLB has a very, very strong union. The strongest players' union in all of sports. And conversely, um, the NHL and the NBA don't have as strong, and the NFL uh, has is arguably the weakest un the players' union out of the uh, all the major four sports. So, that's it. Uh, just a note, uh, not seven teams, uh, the Buffalo Sabres, the New Jersey Devils, Anaheim Ducks, the Los Angeles Kings, San Jose Sharks, Ottawa Senators, and the Detroit Red Wings are not going to be playing. They are the teams that did not qualify for this expanded playoff round. Their season is over, and they will participate in the NHL Draft Lottery on June 26th. Also, while we don't have anything concrete for the NBA, uh, sources are saying that we are there's... The Board of Governors is expected to approve the the uh, restart plan uh, on Thursday. That is the one that that they they will bring um, 22 teams to Disney's uh, ESPN Wild World of Sports Complex in July to have the NBA uh, playoff picture. So we'll probably talk about that um, at some at some point, either Thursday, Friday, or uh, next week depending on if there's a concrete date. Because notably, we have the NHL proposal, but there is no uh, there is no date that says when the playoffs is happening. That is still up in the air. And the now, same the one thing NBA. I 
don't like about the NBA playing in Disney is uh, you got to win that championship in the championship MVP uh, to go to Disney. Yeah. You shouldn't have to <laughs> be able to go yeah. there. <laughs> you, going to Disney is earned. You have to earn your trip to Disney. You don't just go to Disney. Yeah. <laughs> and there's our laugh. Yeah, there we go. The it, it's, so, oh. it's so nice to actually be able to talk spor- sports and have something concrete to talk about. This is something we've been oh. missing for like the last two mm. months. Yeah. Um, now, I know you're not super into NASCAR, yeah. uh, but I've been watching most of these races. Because that's, uh, these the, that's, the ol- that's the only thing that's really going on. Like, yeah. yeah, actually, uh, one of the guys I used to deliver pizza with, he's been messaging me because, like, uh, other than UFC and uh, that Bill Mickelson, Tom Brady uh, golf thing uh, that went on the other week, there's not really much to, like, do sports betting and. Uh, he'll like message me about like oh who you think should win for this what are your thoughts on this and I've actually been not that I'm a NASCAR expert because I know nothing about cars or very little about physics um, just because that wasn't my field of study um, but just watching it and listening to some of it I mean this past Sunday we had uh, the Bristol uh, Tennessee race uh, and Oof, it's a half mile track with 40 cars going. I mean, when you have the pace car going out, the pace car is three fourths of the way around the track compared to the last place car. Um, so I already know Bristol just from watching as a kid that it's going to be a tough race. There's going to be lots of wrecks. Uh, you can't really go three cars wide, let alone two or even one sometimes. Um, but they decided to put like this grip on the inside of the track. And that just was, like, not happening. Um, It was, like, seeming to make things worse. Um, The the drivers, they would try and stay on the inside a little bit. uh, But after a while, I guess because the way the tracks uh, tilted, uh, those left inside tires uh, would just, like, heat up too much. And they'd have to, like, drift back up to the top. And then they're drifting back down. Yeah, they're going all over the place. Yeah, so Denny Hamlin, who usually does pretty well on short... Uh, run tracks he was doing that and then he hit the wall late uh, had a couple other cars tap each other uh, one guy seemed to like regain it and then uh, it was just contact and <laughs> the other car just smashed into the front of it and <laughs> ripped out the entire radiator uh, <laughs> there are just tubes all over the place um, but then uh, it, it got down towards the end uh, there was a caution I think there were like almost 18 cautions uh, on the night in the 500 laps. Um, so it was just completely crazy. But, like, a caution came out with, like, a couple laps to go. And uh, who did I see was in the front leading? It was uh, Joey Logano, uh, Chase Elliott, uh, Kyle Busch, Jimmy Johnson. And I'm like, well, let's see. Kyle Busch and Chase Elliott are pretty dirty. Uh, Joey Logano is a whiner. Uh, so this isn't going to be good. And of course, on like the last lap, uh, Elliot got a little loose. Logano bumped him, but it was like all fair. Elliot regained his form. They could have like kept going for that another lap, but Elliot decided to be a bigger jerk than the MLB owners and just rammed Logano's car into the wall and just held it there. Not like bump it and then go. Like he just held that in there and almost made it come to like a dead stop. Uh, so instead of settling for, say, second place, which he probably would have finished if uh, he didn't get the pass from Logano, uh, he ended up finishing, like, way past that. I don't even know what it was, but uh, Elliot's just a dirty racer. Uh, he's dangerous. Uh, I mean, he complained when he got swiped uh, a couple weeks back, and he's like, oh, well, I mean, that guy clipped me. And it's like, well, you know, you did even worse at this point. At least that guy was, like, trying to murder. You just, like, smashed your car into that. Um, but I- I've been enjoying the races uh, other than that, mostly because my driver, Kevin Harvick, is doing pretty well right now. He's leading uh, in points. Um, but props to Brad Kozlowski for... Uh, winning Sunday's race uh, after Chase Elliott had a meltdown. And then last Sunday, uh, Elliott decided to pit with, like, three laps to go, and Kozlowski stole that win. So, in your face, Elliott. Um, I mean, he did get the win last Wednesday. Um, I 
because NASCAR has been holding their main series event on Sundays and Wednesdays, although they've been doing it on Thursdays because rain is a thing, I guess. It, it, but, it's a, yeah. yeah, I mean, it, as I said, it's still good that we're talking about uh, yeah. some sports. And quick thing before, uh, before we uh, cut off, I forgot to mention this earlier with uh, the... Uh, an early response from the play, uh, someone on the side of the, the uh, Players Association for MLB, uh, qu- quote that ML- MLB has a good faith obligation to provide as many games as possible. End quote. That is from uh, John Heyman. So, as we said before, that it that it seems like that that uh, both sides only want only will have that as a last resort, uh, short of canceling the season. That. I think my expectation is that they'll settle on somewhere between 80 and 90 games for a season. Yeah. As I mean, I'm hoping for 100, but like the way things are going, yeah. they're not going to be starting games until August. Yeah. That's just yeah. crazy. Well, a- actually, they, they're, uh, I believe it was Ken Rosenthal that said that the hard deadline for starting the regular season on the 4th of July weekend is more like uh, the uh, end, of, end of this week no later than the 9th. To, yeah, given the logistics you still of starting ramp training. Up. Yeah, because you still got to do spring training once you get everything. And then some of these players aren't even in the U.S. yet, which is huge with hockey right now. I mean, oh, yeah. I'd say at least half the players, maybe more, aren't from the U.S. Um, some have residency here in the U.S. and I guess Canada too. Um, but a lot of these players are over in Europe or over in uh, the Asian part of Russia. Um I mean, some of these guys are just there, and not only do they, when they come over, they have to quarantine for two weeks themselves. Um, luckily, I think some of them are like living with each other, so I guess they'll be fine that way. Um, less housing situations, uh, but they got to be quarantined for two weeks alone there. Uh, meanwhile, like if they're being quarantined, they're not able to like get access to an ice rink or anything else. Yeah. Um, so they'll just have to like make do with some stuff, but you also have the other logistics of Canada has a fourteen day quarantine for anyone entering their country as well. So, what does that mean for the Blue Jays or the Maple Leafs? Yeah, I mean something they'll have to give. Yeah, um, some... I mean sports always rushes. I mean uh, even with hockey, uh, like I said, a lot of these players are uh, overseas and most of their green cards and whatnot. Uh, run to the end of the season, which is like around like June 30th and whatnot. Uh, so their contracts end June 30th, and so do like their green cards. But because the season's being extended, what happens? The contract is there, but that green card isn't. And I mean, it's sports, so I'm sure they'll get it all expedited and whatnot. Uh, but th- that's another concern you have to bring up too, because you got to process all that paperwork and everything else. Um, and who, who's going to be paying for all that then? It's a, it's a uh, lot is of... Is it the players? Is it the teams? Yeah. You, you don't know. It's a lot of moving parts that we'll still know. But hmm. I do know that based on on all the uptick of sports that we're, we're going to hear from the NBA very soon, we'll definitely hear stuff about MLB considering they have to put their nose to the grindstone on this. Uh, yeah. I think we might actually be able to have an episode next week. What do you think? I think so. Um, I know uh, we'll probably get a little bit more of uh, the sports players and celebrities talking about uh, the events that took place uh, the other week uh, with now all the protests, but um, as not to be too political bros, um, obviously what happened was not a good thing um, with Floyd, but... Uh, and you want to have these sports players standing up uh, and supporting and rallying everyone together, but to go out and just like destroy property and other things—that's just not the answer. Yeah. Um, uh, Kaepernick's probably laughing like I was just kneeling down, but now people are like setting targets on fire and stealing jewelry. I mean. Yeah, it's scary. I, 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 I don't know. It's the, these sports players definitely need to like take control over this and yeah. uh, guide everyone back to where they need to be because this is just getting 
way out of hand. Yeah, it's. Uh, I've been watching the coverage and some of what they're saying that they're organized groups that are coordinating eff, uh, efforts in the urban centers. It's a scary situation, and I'll say that that uh, the, pro, the the protesters in the day are not the people who are the rioters in the night. And I will acknowledge yeah. that, and I will say to those in the in the day that we hear you, we stand with you, uh, we, uh, uh, not being black, either of us, we can't begin to imagine what you guys go through on a daily basis, but we will send all the, the support and love your way because that is frankly all we are able to do in these, this time at the moment. Just yeah. stay safe, every everyone. Please be careful if you're in a in a protest, especially in the twilight hours. And they're definitely not practicing social distancing. Yeah, what happened uh, to social distancing at all? This like, that just, it was just like, we're, we're like, all right, we'll ignore the Astros now. Now we're ignoring social distancing. So like, no one remembers the Astros anymore. Uh, like, th this whole... Yeah, the Astros got, have gotten off scot-free on this. Same thing with the Red Sox, but that'll yeah, be... Yeah, that, that, that's just... We'll leave that yeah. for another episode. We've been going on for, like, 40... Uh, minutes or so. I think it's time yeah. to uh, wrap this uh, wrap this up in yeah. a nice bow. So we'll uh, leave this off with John Lennon's "Imagine." Uh, that no, okay. we, we don't have copyrights yeah, for that. Yeah, we our channel. We don't want to take it down. All right, see you. Yeah. See you guys next time. All right, wash your hands and wear your mask. <laughs>